guys, welcome to Living Tomorrow Today. I'm Julio. And I'm Nicole. And today we're going to talk to you about our thoughts on if you should have an outdoor kitchen for your RV. Okay, so our opinion um, on whether you should have an outdoor kitchen for your RV is... You should have one. Yeah, absolutely. I th I almost think it is a necessity to have it. And we're going to talk to you about the, the different reasons why we think it's so important to have it and why we're so glad that we opted for an RV that has the outdoor kitchen because we came really close. Uh, if you guys remember one of our previous videos, we talked about... Uh, do you remember the name of that RV? I don't remember the name. The Volante? Yeah, the Volante. We came really close yeah, to that Yeah, we one. really loved the indoor, the inside layout of that, but it did not have an outdoor kitchen. I th if that had an outdoor kitchen... I think for us, that would have been the perfect RV. Mm -hmm. So Nora wants to say hi. <laughs> I, I really, really wanted the outdoor kitchen. And, and I kind of, you know, was just telling Nicole that that's something that I really wanted. Initially, I was like, it's not a make or break deal. But as we kept getting closer and closer to buying, I was like, you know, I really want it. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we ended up finding this RV, uh, which met all our needs. And uh, we're super happy with it. You're probably wondering why we started with some b-roll of um the spaghetti that we just made our messy kitchen yeah our messy <laughs> kitchen and two things is one so you can see what it's actually kind of like when you're eating inside the rv with two kids mm -hmm. and then also we had not planned on making this video but when we kind of just realized everything that was going on we thought this was a good time to talk to you about the outdoor kitchen because mm -hmm. we we used the outdoor kitchen we used the indoor kitchen and uh, everything just fits. So we'll we'll talk about the outdoor kitchen out here, and then uh, we'll talk about the stuff inside as well, and how we think those they work together. There's different types of outdoor kitchens. Some of them just come with the grill, and some of them come with a refrigerator, like this one does. And this one also has a sink. And some of them slide out further. Um, there's all sorts of different types. I would say, in my opinion, that you really want to try and get something that has all three of these of these things. Um, so let me show you this cast iron pan that we've been using a lot. You can see all of the uh, grease and everything and then it's kind of out there. All of that stuff would be inside our kitchen if we didn't cook the, the meat outside. And then this is real nice because you can wash your hands or whatever. And then if you want to keep any sorts of meats in here, you can do that or drinks or whatever. It's empty right now. This is usually just electric. Uh, this does not run on propane. But I think all three of these really complement each other well and um and they're good to have so i mean if you look if you look up here you can see grease splattered all the way up here you can yeah. see all the I don't little think the camera catches up but yeah you probably don't but it's all the way up i mean you can see it back here and then like you said you can see it back there and um they're not like the best i mean the kitchen isn't like the best quality or anything i mean look at our sink this is like teeny tiny and um it's, one thing it doesn't have a drain. One so. thing you can do, yeah, is you, is you can drill a hole in here and put a like a five five gallon bucket or something down or there. Or what I thought, what I even thought about was just, I mean, this just sits in there. It's just a tray. Oh yeah, that's true. So I'll you can completely take it out, yeah, and set a bucket down underneath to catch all your water and then you know dump it later or whatever. But this isn't necessary. But if you want to throw a couple things in here, but if it you can hold really like some, need, yeah, some yeah. you can clean out. You can roughly clean some utensils and stuff like yeah. that, and then go inside and clean them up. Let me show you just kind of real quick how this works. Uh, this obviously does run on propane. Ours is a two burner, uh, and again, they come in different sizes. But this uh, this propane line just usually tucks in down there, and this is a quick connect or quick disconnect as well. It just goes right there. This lever over here is the gas on and off. When it's down, the gas is off. When you lift it up, it's on. And then you just slide this back and you'll hear it click. Give it a little tug, make sure it's good. Open it up and you're ready to cook. So then this just kind of, oh. <laughs> once you want to connect, this just slides in and it locks in and uh, super simple, so. So uh, we, we have really enjoyed having the outdoor kitchen and not just enjoyed, but I think it's really been something that is uh, useful uh, to have. Um, Don't want to call it a necessity, but yeah. I mean, we have a three burner stove inside and uh, they're small burners. They're not large. In essence, it kind of is a necessity. Like if you plan yeah. on making a big meal or anything, I mean, like we were cooking pasta and our big 
pasta pot took up a lot of space. I mean, you couldn't really get to the back burner, so. Yeah, that's true. So what we did was I cooked the meat out here and Nicole was in there with the, um, with the pasta and salads and, and mm -hmm. everything else. So in essence, it really extends your kitchen because we'll go inside and show you, you really don't have that much space. Snore again. So we cooked on the front burner. I mean, we could probably have put it back here and you do, but if you're using your bigger burner, cause we needed it to boil and everything, it's kind of hard to maneuver back around here. As I was saying, you can see how little space we have. Once we take it off the burner, I mean, right here, yeah. two, two things are taking up our space, our coffee pot and uh, our blender. I mean, and those are, those are personal choices. You know, yeah. obviously we could make more space. We do have a French press, but We've been using this and this is a giant blender yeah and and here's and here's the reality i mean we have an island but look i mean we have <laughs> stuff the kids bring in and we have water bottles and you know we're not staging this for you i mean these are the the plates that we use and stuff so wash stuff and yeah so try and put it away right this away. space gets used up really fast but you have to plan a little bit before you start cooking you yeah. can't just decide to start cooking and then you realize you have no no more space so. yeah everything's kind of a shuffle like a dance you know you're moving things around over here and then you come back over here and you move things around and put things up i mean what try and wash everything as soon as we use it and put it away so when you're looking for an RV, something that you probably want to keep in mind is the space that you have to cook. One of the RVs that we looked at had a huge um, like counter countertop space. Huge for an RV. I mean, when we saw it, it was like, wow, that's big. There are that, some out there. So yeah, so I mean, that's something to keep in mind. I mean, when you look at it, of course, it's going to be empty and it looks, you know, mm -hmm. It looks like a ton of space and everything. Yeah. And that goes for all space inside the RV, but <laughs> sticking to the kitchen, just think that there's going to be stuff on there, not just cooking stuff, because yeah. it's inevitable that you're going to have, you're going to just put things on there. So the outdoor kitchen is really, for us, just, like I said, been an extension of our indoor kitchen. And one of the benefits too, that we like of having the outdoor kitchen is that it really helps with um, like we were talking about the grease, obviously not getting all inside and all yeah, over this. It would be all over that. <laughs> not getting here. And then soaking up the odors as well. That's true. Um, it's good to be able to let that be outside versus having it just stay in here in the, in the RV because we use our vent, but that's one thing too. You have to go outside, at least for our rig, you have to go outside and you have to open it up to where the vent properly works. So that was a really good point that Nicole just made about the odors because it's it's probably something you don't consider when you're in your house and even even a small house, let's say, of I mean, just a thousand square feet, which is probably like three times the size of this already. Yeah, the odors but, are Yeah, those amplified. odors can, yeah, those odors can, they have room to go somewhere, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's our kitchen, there's our couch, you know, and everything. So anything, anything, Anything pungent is going to just permeate and, and sit and stay. So, and then I think also this is a recreational vehicle. I mean, if you can't, I think, take joy and, and, and have a good time being outside cooking and, yeah. you know, just having to drink while you're cooking or being out with the kids. And of course we are on our property right now, but uh, we hope to have some beautiful views down the road. Um, being outside, I think is just, part of this you know mm -hmm. for us the that rig part, yeah, yeah for us the rig was always just get, a means yeah a means to get to where we're going kind of a, a hotel on wheels we wanted to make sure that our main focus was to be outside, outside. Mm -hmm. as a family and enjoying what we're doing together mm -hmm. even if it's just cooking a meal so mm -hmm. um and i mean if you look outside it's like amazing outside right is. now how could you not even we our have, we have amazing Set. Even our view of our own property looks pretty good today. So I know that for us, uh, the outdoor kitchen was a big question on whether we should or should not get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are still trying to decide on whether which RV to get and you don't know if you should or should not get an outdoor kitchen, our opinion is absolutely yes, get an outdoor kitchen. I almost wish they would stop making RVs without an outdoor kitchen because mm -hmm. they, they make you be outside. You're gonna really enjoy uh, the extension of your kitchen. Uh, extra burners, uh, less mess inside. So um, yeah, I so far see no downside to having the outdoor kitchen. However, if you do have an outdoor kitchen and you don't like it, if you hate it, let us know. We wanna know about it and what, what happened. Why do you not like it? Make a comment. Yeah. 
and uh, let us know. So maybe if we need to keep an eye on something or think about something. I yeah, don't maybe know. something that might go wrong down the road yeah. that we haven't even thought, thought about. about. Yeah. I mean, if that line is damaged. I mean, that line. It's not that walk great. Outside. The propane line runs all the way from the front from these two propane tanks. So um, we have two tanks down here and, and that feeds all the propane to the RV. So that that's for our furnace, that's for our uh, indoor kitchen, that's for our outdoor kitchen. So and we try, or at least I try to be like, right now as I'm still kind of learning, really conservative with mm -hmm. uh, how much propane. So I don't like have it on really high heat. I, t I let things kind of take their time to boil or whatever, so I don't, you know, burn through the propane. That's kind or of maybe we're doing that wrong too. Maybe we should jack it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just turn it off really fast. We definitely are going to upgrade the size of our propane tanks down the road. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's not a priority. Yeah. Um, they do seem to last a long time, especially if we're not using the uh, the furnace inside the RV. Down the road, as as we prepare to go to colder climates. Um, That'll mm -hmm. be something that we do. So probably once we're like really living in it too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're well, like we're quasi. -ish. Yeah, we're we're pretty close to it. I mean, like ninety percent. Yeah, ninety percent. We know we have that security blanket of knowing that our house is you know fifteen feet right there. But mm -hmm. uh, we have some news about our house, and uh, we'll be sure to talk to you about that in the next video. So if you guys are new, uh, we would really appreciate if you would subscribe, uh, leave us any questions in the comments, uh, give us a thumbs well wishes. up. Well wishes. Yeah, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if, oh, yeah. Subscribe. S subscribe, all that stuff. And if you are watching this video and we have not hit 100 subscribers, we're really close. I think we're at so 98. Close. If you would please uh, subscribe. And, you know, if, Tell you a friend. If, if you like what we're talking about, yeah. uh, hit, hit that subscription button so we can finally hit 100 subscribers. I don't know. It might be a little too late now, but we should have probably done something fun to celebrate hitting 100 subscribers. Maybe we could buy somebody an RV or something. I don't, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That sounds fair, right? Yeah. 100 subscribers, buy you an RV. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you at the next one. Bye. Bye.